Hi everyone, it's Krista and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, hello again. So this is my channel. I love to do DIYs on a budget, Dollar Tree DIYs, thrift, thrift flips, farmhouse rustic decor, and also reeds and seasonal decor. So if you like what you see here, you know what to do. Hit that red subscribe button. Also leave me a message. I love to hear what you guys think. And give me a thumbs up. That helps my channel. You can also follow me over on Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and Facebook. Make sure you come check out my Facebook group. I post videos on there all the time. And also I have an Etsy shop. It's called Chris's Read Design. I will have all those links down below. But first, it's five under five dollars, and we're doing Dollar Tree items today. Our host is Crafty Cove, and also Farm Charm Chic, and our co-host is Annaline. Now, first DIY number one, and more about that in a minute. So, the first DIY, I'm taking this pinwheel that you get from the Dollar Tree. Some of these wooden hearts that I had in my stash, and these hearts I had in my stash. And a little wooden circle, this leftover piece of metal that I had. And one of those um, hexagon, <laughs> I always say octagon, hexagon um, wooden signs from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to trace out these smaller hearts onto these bigger hearts. Now this was a pack that I had from Valentine's Day um, from uh, Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to paint those with my black ink uh, paint by Waverly. And I'm going to do both of those in black and then also the wooden circle as well. Next, once those dry, I'm going to go in with my stencil brush and I am going to dry brush all of these uh, pieces because these hearts actually have little grooves in them, see? And um, you get a pack of them at Hobby Lobby, really cheap during them. Um, but if you don't have these right now, you can use the wooden hearts instead. It really doesn't matter. And then I'm just dry brushing over all of these pieces with a light coating of the white chalk paint by Waverly. Just a really light dry brush. Next, I'm gonna cut this metal that's already spiraled for me, so I don't have to do that, because that's gonna be the top part of our bee. Can you guess what we're making? A bee, a bumblebee. And I'm gonna glue the two hearts down at the top of the one piece that we took off of the windmill, pinwheel, I should say and then putting the little circle on top. And there's our little bee. So now we're gonna use those little metal pieces that I have. Now, if you don't have these, you can use floral wire and just make a little spiral around your pencil or pen, that would work. And then I just glued them to the back and stuck a piece of felt so they stay down. And there is our bee. And now we're just gonna put this on our little sign. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on my bee and I'm gonna glue it down kind of more upward in the corner there of this and I'm going to make sure it's down nice and secure and then I'm going to take this happy sticker that I had um I had these sticker words I have a ton of these in my stash but you can also use stickers from the Dollar Tree they have small um word stickers and also they have small um Oh my god alphabet stickers i can't talk this morning sorry guys but here it is isn't it cute i love the way it turned out you guys let me know what you think down below so like i said these are our hosts and our co-host is annalee ashley diy ash b diy and also there's going to be a playlist go check out all the links down below and these ladies are so talented i love this group every month so next we're going to take some of the um fabric from the dollar tree also, I'm going to be using some of those bees from the Dollar Tree. This um, hexagon pieces from the Dollar Tree, one has the bee on it with the honeycomb and the other one is just a plain wooden hexagon piece and some paints. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to trace out my hexagon piece. Now this fabric I got from Hobby Lobby, but they do have this fabric at the Dollar Tree. I just decided to use this one because it was already cut into. So next I'm going to get my Mod Podge once I cut that piece out and I'm going to use that to glue down my fabric. So once I do the one half, what I do is I just smooth it down and then I do the next half. That's how I do my fabric when I Mod Podge because it just seems to be easier instead of trying to get it all down at one time so you're not getting any bubbles or wrinkles or anything with your fabric. And then I did the second half and then I'm gonna press that down now I also used my mini iron 
and some parchment paper and I iron the top of it with my mini iron, but I put the parchment paper down first. And what this does is smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles and it always works every single time. I love using this. And my mini iron is in my um, Amazon shop. So that link is also in my description box in case you're interested. And then I'm gonna use some Antique Wax by Waverly and I am going to use a baby wipe and I'm just going to go around the whole hexagon, not the B, but it's okay if you get some on the B because we're gonna paint over that. Next, I'm gonna go over the top part of that with also Mod Podge to seal it, to seal my fabric in. Now I have this stencil that I had in my stash. You don't have to use a stencil, this is optional, but this stencil is also in my Amazon shop in case you're interested. And I just stenciled out the B so that I can make it the black and the yellow. And this is just kind of making it a little more cute, I guess. A little bit easier for me to paint the um, lines of the B on here. And that's why I use the stencil, but absolutely don't have to. You can use tape. You can use whatever you want to color, you know, your B. Then I'm going to take one of my black... Um, these are acrylic markers. They're also in my Amazon shop. And I used these to color in the black portion of my B. So the yellow I just did with a thin paintbrush. And the yellow I used was um, gold, like a goldenrod. It wasn't actually yellow yellow. It was a goldenrod it was called. But I like that color. And then I just went in between each one of those and also the wings. But we're going to make these wings kind of a little bit more so that you could see them. So what you're gonna see is I'm gonna come in with this um, silver marker. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. They're like glass markers for glass, but you can use a silver Sharpie too if you don't, if you can't find these. And I just went in between where you see the lines on my stencil just to make the wings a little bit more so that you could see them and more realistic, I guess. And um, this really, really worked well. I liked the way it came out. So I did that on both sides of my wings. And then I also went around the edges of the bee where the black is. So like the head of the bee, also the legs. And I just went around it just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to show you up close there. See, I really like that. It just makes it look a little bit better, I think. But it's totally optional. You don't have to do this. And then once we get that all done, then what I'm going to do is I am going to take this whole piece and I'm going to put some super glue um, from the Dollar Tree. And also, yeah, see, there it is. So much better. I love that. So I'm going to use super glue and hot glue. So I did both on these because I wanted to make sure it was going to stick to the fabric because it's wood and, you know, I didn't want things falling apart. <laughs> so that's why I used the super glue and the hot glue. And this stuck very well. And this turns out so cute, you guys. And then after we get this down, I'm going to put a little hanger on it as well. But first, we're going to take some, I just took some of these picks that I had from the Dollar Tree and I made a little swag and I just tied some string around the center of it and tied them together. And then I'm gonna glue this down to the top of my piece. And next I'm gonna use my Bodabra, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, and some ripped, I tore up some, I'm using lace, ribbon lace. And I'm also using, that's, this is all from my stash, and some fabric that I had that matches um, what we're doing. And I just kind of like flip them back and forth. I put it in and I just keep going back and forth with the ripped um, fabric and also the ribbon, the um, lace ribbon. And these are all fabric, so they're really easy to just fold over. And I just keep doing that. And I call these like rag bows or you could call them messy bows. I don't know, there's so many names for these, but I love making these. They're rustic and so farmhouse. And I just think they come out so super cute and you don't have to be, you don't have to know how to make a bow. That's what I love about this. So, cause I'm not a great bow maker. <laughs> so I love making these and I love the way they turn out. I just think they're super pretty. And you can put any color fabric you want in there for whatever project you're doing. And then I take a little zip tie and I just zip that in the center. And I just use the Bodabra just to hold all my fabric in. So I love using my Bodabra. 
and then I just kind of fluff it out and now I'm just gonna trim off all the longer pieces so that everything's nice and even and then I'm gonna take the ribbon and I'm just going to glue it in the center of my little swag that I made super cute and then I took one of these beads from the Dollar Tree and I stuck him in the center of my bow then I'm gonna take some more of those little bees and I am going to stick those down right on the little bee cone of our bee sign and I stuck down I think three or four and I just think it you know looked cute because instead of the one bee you just have a couple of little ones just kind of moving around there in the beehive and I just love the way this turned out you guys gotta let me know what you think down in the comments below because this one I think was my favorite out of all my DIYs in this video <laughs> and then I took some beads now these are also in my um, Amazon shop they are not color though they're raw beads and they're wood beads and I'm just going to string them you know yellow black yellow black and make a little hanger for this and what I did is I just painted them with my um, black paint and my yellow paint and then once I get those stringed on I'm just gonna put a little knot in the back so my beads don't fall off and then I'm going to use my staple gun and I'm just going to staple this to the back of my sign and then cut the excess off and then there is our little bee sign isn't it cute I absolutely love the way this turned out I'm loving Dollar Tree stuff guys they are really stepping it up this year so now we're going to go on to DIY number three now this DIY is super simple I'm taking this little sign from the dollar wood sign from the dollar tree a napkin that i had in my stash that has a bee on it some paints and some mod podge and then a couple more of those little picks that i used in the last diy first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to paint this piece with my white um chalk paint by waverly and the only reason is because you're going to see through this um napkin so i want to make sure it's white and I did the whole front, back, sides, everything. And then I cut a piece out and we're gonna use this piece. First, you have to separate your napkin, make sure you get all the layers off when you Mod Podge with napkins. And then I'm going to stick down my Mod Podge, spread that out, and then we're gonna put the napkin on top. First, I dry my Mod Podge with napkins. This trick works all the time too. And then I'm going to put the napkin on top, like so, once it's dry. And then I'm going to put my parchment paper on top and go over it with my iron. And this is not going to give you any bubbles or any wrinkles, you guys. It works every time. The heat is what reactivates the uh, Mod Podge and that's what helps it stick. Only it's going to be nice and smooth because of the iron. So try that out if you have an iron because it works really, really well. And if not, then you could just stick it down, you know, do your way. But I'm just showing you little tricks here that I do. Next, I'm gonna use the antique wax and I'm gonna go along the edges. And oh, yes, and I also sanded the edges off, of course. Make sure you go in a downward motion because you don't want to rip your napkin. Next, I'm gonna go around the edges with my brush and I'm just dry brushing the edges very lightly with the antique wax. I don't wanna do too much. I just kinda wanna, you know, make those edges kinda pop out. And I want this to look more farmhouse and rustic because that's the look I'm going for. It. You could totally skip this part if you don't wanna do it. And then I'm going to dry brush the whole thing with the antique wax. So I'm going to do all the sides and the front and the back. And I love this one too. Um, I'm going to say that about all my DIYs. Sorry, guys. But I love the way these all turned out. And they were super cheap to make because we're using Dollar Tree. And everything turned out so cute. But those napkins are in my Amazon shop. I bought them like last year. So if you're interested, you can pick them up there. And then what I did is I stuck down one of these little picks. I just, you know, cut it off of from the Dollar Tree with the little flowers. And it happens to have these little yellow flowers on them, so it was perfect. And I just glued it to the top on both sides. And then I had one of these um, bees in my stash that are on like a little pick, I guess. And I cut that off and then I just stuck my bee on the top. But you can also use the Dollar Tree bees if you can't find these anywhere. But I had these in my stash from last year. And there you go. There is our little bee sign. Isn't it cute? I love it. I love this napkin. It is so, so pretty. So now DIY number four. This one, we're gonna make a bee. 
So we're gonna go a little bit more neutral colors. I'm gonna use that wooden egg from the Dollar Tree. Some of these heart chalk sticks, chalkboard things from the Dollar Tree. Also some ribbon again and some teared up fabric. We're also gonna use those fabric. We're also gonna use some paints. I'm using plaster paint by Waverly to paint the egg. Um, this is going to be the body of RB. Then I'm going to paint this little round. You can use any round, wooden round, that's the size for this bee. I just happen to have this in my stash, so I use that. And I got them from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to trace out, now this fabric I've had in my stash, but they do sell fabric just like this at the Dollar Tree because I've seen it. And I actually have one of it at home too in my house. Um, and then I just cut it out and I glued it down, the fabric to my egg and with the Mod Podge. Then I went back over it with the Mod Podge. Now these little wooden heart, these little wooden chalkboard hearts, I'm going to trace these out on that fabric that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now this fabric is really cool because it's black, but it has a little bit of the yellow in it. You can't really tell on camera, but it does. So I thought these were perfect for the wings of my bee. So I, that's why I'm using this fabric, but they do have it at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do the Mod Podge and we're just going to put these on top of the four um, hearts. And then once we get these on and all nice and smooth out, then we're going to put our bee together. And it's really simple to do this, you guys. So I know you must have some of these wooden eggs left over from, from Easter. So that's what I'm using here. It's the chunky one um, that they sell at the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going along the edges with my antique wax, just like my other projects. I like to make it look rustic and farmhouse, so that's why I'm going along the whole thing with my antique wax, and I'm just doing a light dry brush and going around the edges. And then we're going to put our bee together. Once I did the top, I wanted it to look a little aged. And I love this because this is really primitive, and it makes the bee look so, you know, really cute. And, you know, you don't have to really match anything because it's more neutral colors. And what I did is I put my four hearts together at the bottom and then I glued my egg on top of the hearts. And now I'm just gonna glue down my little head of my bee. Now I, I already made my little raggy bow that I call it. And I'm going to stick that in the center of my bee. And I used all neutral colors in my ribbon. I always try to match what I'm doing. And then I had this little button and I decided to stick that in the center of my bow. This little brown and a little bit of yellow in there. Isn't he cute? I love the way he turned out. Now, DIY number five. This one is a little house from the Dollar Tree. Some of these bees, that fabrics from the Dollar Tree and also leftover pick that we've been using throughout this video. So now for these houses, you can't take them apart. So what I did is I placed my fabric down, used my little thin Sharpie, and I just traced the top of the roof on my fabric. And then I cut that out and then I went and traced the rest of the house. This way it was easier for me to apply it to the front part of my house. Now these are the houses at the Dollar Tree that you get. They actually have a little stand in the back of them, like a picture frame. So these are really cool to have. I love these. And I just used my Mod Podge and I made sure I glued it down really good and smoothed it out. And then um, I also went over the top of it with the Mod Podge over the fabric as well. Just to seal it, make sure it's going to stay down and not come up. Then what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to take my antique wax and I'm going to go along the edges of my house. And I'm going to make sure that um, it looks a little rustic in farmhouse. And I dry brush the whole thing over the top as well. And that, of course, is once the Mod Podge dries. I guess I should have said that before, but yeah, you want to make sure your Mod Podge is dried. And then I went over the top of it like so. Next, I'm going to take those picks and I cut a few pieces and I'm going to glue them on each side of the top of the roof of the house. And I'm just gonna do them on each side and then I'm going to put some of those yellow flowers on there as well. And this turned out super cute too. I mean, I love all of these and they're so easy, you guys. So easy to make these. And then I took one of these sunflowers. I had these in my stash from last year and I stuck one in the middle of the house. And then we're gonna take some of those, um, oh yeah, then I stuck another little piece of greenery coming down 
from the flower at the top of the roof of the house. And then I'm going to put, um, it, there it is. And then I'm going to take some of the little bees and I'm going to put those around the house as well. So I just stuck a few down, not too many. And I just have the bees going in different directions and so, so cute. But then I felt like it needed something else. It was just too plain. So, which you could leave it like this if you like that. But I decided to take some jute twine and I just did around the um, house in the center. And then I took one of the flowers, sunflowers, and stuck that in the center as well. And there it is, you guys. I hope you guys like it. Make sure you go check everyone out in the playlist and the hosts and co-hosts. And I want to thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. And as always, remember, stay crafty. Bye.